You're listening to the Wedding Biz Network, the voice of the creative entrepreneur. Come on, no! Hey everyone, it's Andy Kushner with The Wedding Biz. Today we have a very special and important interview. And before I introduce it, I want to mention that just last Monday, I interviewed Zuzu Burkhoff, a photographer out of Berlin with a very interesting story. I recommend that you check it out. And now today, in lieu of the next level, I want to present you with this really important interview that is pertinent right now during COVID for those of us in the weddings and events industry. The Live Events Coalition is a volunteer-run nonprofit organization created in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and its devastating impact on the live events industry in order to provide advocacy, resources, and a network that connects and supports businesses, contractors, and the general event industry workforce. A national Facebook group was established for all those wanting to connect, share stories, opportunities, or just support the live events mission. And the Facebook page member count has now reached 23,000 members. And more than 20 local chapter groups have been established to date by volunteers in support of the mission of the coalition at the local grassroots level. And at the national level, they now have an executive committee leading more than 60 volunteers working collaboratively on outreach, lobbying, and securing support from major partners, among other key initiatives. So today, I speak with Nancy Schaefer, founder and CEO of Bravo Events, and she is the board president and director of the Live Events Coalition. Hey, Nancy, you're the founder and CEO of Bravo Events, and we've worked together on various types of events in the past. It's so good to be talking to you again. It's wonderful to be here with you. I wish it was different circumstances, but I love any time that I get to have with you, Andy. Uh, Thanks. Before we start talking about the Live Events Coalition, I believe your business, Bravo Events, has has evolved. What what do you mainly do now or or just prior to the pandemic? Because I think it's it changed from what I can tell. We do talk about pre-COVID life and pre-COVID life and then what's post-COVID life. Um, And a lot of it is unknown. But Bravo is, we're an event planning firm that focuses on the association, corporate, and nonprofit market. And we support our clients in working with them to understand how to bring their story to life and understand that an event is not just the event itself, but it's part of a much larger and more important communication strategy. Um, and how do they utilize that in a, in a long-term situation so that it becomes far more impactful um, to try to get our clients to understand that the event itself, while it is exciting and it is a, in many respects, the culmination of the hard work, I refer to all events as perpetual motion if they're annual events. So Mm. work to get there and you do all of that work and you get there and then you have the event. And the truth is the event is just the beginning of the cycle all over again, because you make sure that you engage any and all of your stakeholders. Yeah. Well, that's great. I'd like to talk about the coalition, you know, how it came about, the goals and objectives and how people can support it. I mean, because Nancy, I think it's such a critical cause. That's why I wanted to have you on and to talk about it. And first of all, I saw on the website, there's a quote by Eileen Beloy, if I'm saying her name correctly, and it is, we want to ensure our industry is part of the national conversation during this time of crisis. And then there's a quote by Isaac Rothwell saying, the live events and business meetings industry is the invisible fabric that ties our U.S. business culture together. Boy, those two quotes really sum it up, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, you know, we could probably end the interview based on those two statements. Yeah, right. Um, well, we won't. Um, <laughs> I can give you a little bit of background. Yeah, please. Isaac Rothwell and several of his colleagues back in early March, when all of this came down, were lamenting as we all were about, oh my God, Chicken Little was right, the sky has fallen, and now what do we do? Um, And without anything to do, what he did was they wrote a petition and they posted it on um, change.org. And he said, I feel better now. I've gotten it off my chest. I know what I'm doing and I can now go to sleep and feel like I've at least used my voice. And he woke up the next day thinking maybe a couple of hundred people would have signed the petition. And the petition within probably 24 to 48 hours had 
over 10,000 signatures. Oh my God. Wow. And fast forward to today and we're close to a half a million. And what that said was, oh dear, I'm not alone. This is something that there are so many of us feeling. And he started to get people to reach out for him and say, you know, on LinkedIn, looking at him on Facebook, Isaac, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? And so this very grassroots organization called the Live Events Coalition was born. So I joke, this is one of the most important organizations in our current history as an industry that has had no business plan, no intent that it needed to be. And here we are 180 days later, a group of strangers that have put together this organization. Mm. Our mission, and, and we talked a lot about this, and, and the way that, let me back up a minute, the way that I got to it was at the same time, there were state coalitions popping up within their own state saying, oh my God, we need the politicians to hear us. They need to understand that their constituents in their states are dying and that they have shut down our way of making a living. And, and more than that, the way of human beings being able to come together and interact, which is critical on a financial level, but even more so on a human level. And at the same time, DC had created, Roger White had brought a group of us together and said, I, I just want to talk with some of my colleagues. And there were seven of us. And we would get on the call and just talk about, okay, guys, what are we going to do? We would share resources. We would talk about where there were grants and how you had to apply for this and that. And one of the board members from that group, which I sat on, reached out to Isaac, as did I. And I was basically assigned or asked, would I be the point of contact and work with the Live Events Coalition and help grow that? Back then, I had no idea that it would turn into my full-time job um, to grow an organization to save our industry. Um, and fast forward to today, we are a 501c6 um, pending our final approval. And our mission is twofold. It is to advocate on behalf of the live events industry. And we qualify the live events industry as anything from a concert to a trade show, a wedding and bar mitzvah to a gala, um, a festival. The easiest way is if you buy a ticket, if you are invited, if you are given a ticket, or you are sent by your employer, that is a live event. Mm, okay. Um, it makes it very easy to, to say, well, is this a live event? Yes. And, you know, in, in the world that we live in, there are so many different types of live events. But to, to come up with a way of where we are, that is what we prefaced it on. Nancy, I saw a recent Instagram post on the feed saying that almost 70% of live event businesses are going to close by the end of January 2021 without further aid from the government. What, what specifically is the coalition doing to advocate for and to support the live events industry? It is a devastating statistic. And just to give you some background on that statistic, we put a poll out and um, sent it to about 7,000 people. And we received a little bit over 1,200 responses. And that is where that statistic came from. We asked one question, and that question was based on timeline in terms of how long can you survive without any relief? And I'm happy to send over the actual responses and statistics. They're sobering, not surprising. So for that, as an advocacy organization, which is what our main mission is, is that we have engaged a creative advocacy firm, aka a lobbying firm, um, but they don't like to be called lobbyists anymore, who are providing us with guidance. Um, we have a letter writing campaign. We are doing awareness building. We are meeting and reaching out on the state level to all of the legislators. Um, we're having what we refer to as fly-in meetings in hopes that they will hear us. Um, one of the challenges that we have as an industry um, is that we've done a really, really good job at our job, which is to be behind the curtain 
Ours is not the front position. Um, that's not really what the industry as a whole. You as an entertainer is a little bit different. Um, but for most of us in the industry, our job is to be invisible and to showcase the client and to showcase the experience. And we've done such a remarkable job that when you come to a situation like this, people don't really have an understanding of what it is we do. Um, I joke, people arrive at an event and poof, it's done. They experience the event and they leave. They don't see the months and months of planning. They don't see the mass amount of people that are building it. They don't see the days of buildup and they don't see the days of breakdown. What they do is they get what they're supposed to get, which is the experience itself. So when you reach a situation like this, you have a, a double whammy. Number one, an industry of approximately and probably in excess of 12 million people whose livelihood comes from this industry, an ecosystem that is massive, and nobody knows who we are. So, you know, we're, we're magicians, and we had to figure out and had to create a way to build awareness, not only to the general public, but to the elected officials who consistently put us with hospitality. Um, and they think as long as they talk about hotels and restaurants that we're covered. And so, right. you know, it's an educational process as well as an advocacy process. Okay. What is specifically being talked about and done, you know, for the industry as a whole? So we have, um, we created a hymnal, we like to call it, which are our five asks as an industry. Um, and, you know, our industry is primarily made up of small businesses and those small businesses could be solopreneurs um, or small businesses like yours or mine, medium-sized businesses such as caterers and AV companies that might become larger. Um, and then you have some very, very large production companies as well. But for the most part, we are an industry made up of 1099 gig workers, solopreneurs, and small businesses. And Learning what we've learned, looking for a carve out for our industry doesn't work really well for us because people still don't really understand who we are. So we came up with five asks and those five asks include the following. The extension of the PPP program with the ability if you were approved and received previous PPP funds or idle loan funds that you could reapply. Mm. That was, Those were two of our asks. Um, that they would extend the PUA program with the, ex the extended relief that we all need. I know of one person in Florida, herself, her husband, and a small child, and they were 1099 people with their small business, and they are living on $250 a week. Oh, geez. $125 per person. Right. And, you know, that, no, I don't care where you live. That is impossible to live on. Nobody can tell me any different. So extend PPP and EIDL with the ability to reapply and potentially get funding. Pass the Restart Act, which has a very strong focus on small businesses and providing small businesses with the support that we need to reopen redefine or change the way the, the SBA 7A loan process is done because, again, our industry is somewhat different and we don't tend to qualify for those types of loans based on how they actually um, process them. So let's see, that's one, two, three, four, um, all right. So easier SBA 7A funding, the ability to reapply for PPP and EIDL, an updated and improved EIDL and PPP, and then an updated and improved PUA program. We also um, talk a little bit about the need for um, some liability safety issues for all of us. Um, but I, I wouldn't say that that's the number one priority. The number, I think that if you were put in an order, it's restart, extend PUA, PPP, EIDL. Those are the real critical components to what it is that we are trying to advocate for. 
Do you wish you could be a fly on the wall listening to music industry pros like Clive Davis, Jerry Moss, and Edwin McCain? Well, check out my other podcast, The Music Makers, where you can hear great stories from some of the biggest music industry professionals around. You can find it on your cell phone's podcast app or at themusicmakers.com. Again, that's The Music Makers. Well, and also, I understand there are more than uh, 20 local chapter groups established to support the mission of the coalition and, and for people to support each other. What do you suggest people do if they want to start a localized group? So there are a couple of things. So we have, they're actually state coalitions, a little bit different than some of the other um, industry associations where, um, apologies, it's 11 o'clock and the clock is telling me that it's 11 (laughs) o'clock. Hey, listen, this is real. That's okay. (laughs) We're all recording out of our homes. This is what happens when your husband's father was a clockmaker and you have clocks all over the house. That's the only (laughs) little thing, I promise. No, I love it. It's real life. Okay. So there are a couple of ways. First and foremost is to go to our website, which is the live events, plural coalition dot org um, and join or send us an email um, at info at liveeventscoalition.org if you're interested in starting a state coalition or joining a state coalition. Unlike some of the, as I mentioned, the chapter organizations, ANAIS and ILEA and MPI, um, currently our coalitions are statewide. They haven't gone down to the chapter, which works in some places. Um, in others, it gets a little bit more difficult. Texas has a couple because it's, you know, there's not just one state that will cover the whole state because it's a big state. California is similar to that. And you let us know that that's what it is that you want to do. I have three chairs of committees, um, along with Isaac Rothwell, who I mentioned earlier, who handle the federal and legislation relationship. Dwayne Thomas out of Oregon, who also started the Oregon Coalition, works with us on our federal asks. And then I have two gentlemen um, who handle what I call the West Coast and the East Coast. And on the West Coast, it's Andy Gosterman out of Colorado, who's also on the Colorado Coalition, and Sharon Nicholson, who is in Connecticut and started the Connecticut Coalition. And we will help you determine and understand what it means to start a state coalition, because it is, there's a lot to it. Um, Each state, as we know, is operating differently. That's part of the challenge as an industry that we have is that we don't have one mandate that says we will all reopen under these protocols. Everybody has to wear a mask. Everybody has to be six feet apart. Some states say, sure. Some states say, no. D.C., we're still in what they refer to as phase two, which is a state of emergency, and we can only have 50 people. And that includes the staff. Florida, whole state's wide open, do whatever it is that you want to do. Um, So each state's needs and each state's understanding of what their specific policies are gets a little bit complicated. But if you reach out to us, we are happy to have that conversation, work with you to set that up and make sure that we're there to support any needs that you might have. And other than starting a chapter, how else, like if there isn't a local chapter or how else can people get involved and get support or or also volunteer if they want to help out? First and foremost, I ask that everybody join the Live Events Coalition. It is not expensive. We did it by design that way. A six-month membership when we started was $25, and we're now looking at what a year's membership for an individual will be for 2021. So don't don't quote me on the $25. It will go up, but it will not go up dramatically. It will go up a little bit. But we also have memberships for businesses, corporate sponsorships, partnerships, and things of that nature. Join us. Um, We are about to launch a health insurance group policy project where members will be able to participate in that. Wow. That's a membership benefit. We're about to run some educational webinars. Those webinars are not certifications like some of our other industry associations offer. That's not what our mission is. Our mission is to provide resources and support as well as advocacy to our industry and provide our industry with one voice. So we align with those other organizations very closely because they're necessary, but ours is an umbrella for the entire industry. 
if you want to volunteer, when you sign up for the organization, there is a little box that will pop up that will ask you whether or not you would like to volunteer. We have multiple committees. And depending on what you want to do and depending on what your skill set is, there are opportunities for you to volunteer. There are also opportunities for you to volunteer within your states with those state coalitions as well. Um, And we have a letter writing campaign. So on the website, whether you're a member or not, there is a you join letter writing campaign. If you just go in and click on that and add your name and your zip code, it will actually generate and send um, an email to the leadership as well as your state representatives. Clearly, nobody's really listening. Um, I'm in Washington, D.C., and up the street, I, I'm not sure what they're doing, but they're not listening to the American people, um, and that is frustrating. But we know that we cannot take our foot off the gas. We have to keep pushing. We have to keep making noise. You know, the, the old adage, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. We have to be the squeaky wheel. Well, I really appreciate it, and and I, I want to thank you and also Bonnie Fimiano, who is the Coalition Membership Director, and everyone else who is helping such a critically important cause. Nancy, thank you, really. Thank you so much for coming on. Andy, thank you. And, and in closing, the only thing I want to say to everybody on this call is remember that you're not alone and that we are all in this together. And those of us who used to consider ourselves potentially competitors are colleagues. The silver lining to this entire horrific situation is that we are going to come together as an industry. And I think that our value and worth as an industry will be elevated and that you have support from one another. So check on your colleagues. If you need something, you can always reach out to me. Just know that you are not alone and that we are fighting. And if it feels like we're not, believe me, I'm at this desk 12 hours a day. And that is all that my job is, is to fight for us, as is the rest of the board and the volunteers. And we appreciate the support and we appreciate the trust that everybody is putting in us. So I thank you and I encourage you not to give up. Um, But I know that days are bad and days are good. So look for the silver linings. Very well said. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Nancy Schaefer, who is the board president and director of the Live Events Coalition. Be sure to check out the Live Events Coalition website, which is liveeventscoalition.org. This and more information can be found in the show notes at theweddingbiz.com. I also want to thank Nancy for her work with the coalition and for speaking to me today. You can find out about her own events company at aboutbravo.com. Again, aboutbravo.com. And would love if you could follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Wedding Biz. And please share this important episode with your friends and colleagues so they can be aware of the coalition. And next week on Monday, I'll be interviewing Joy Proctor of Joy Proctor Design, a full service design house. Joy has a great story and is doing all kinds of interesting things. And finally, we want to thank our sponsor for today, Kushner Entertainment. If you want high touch, completely customized entertainment that travels all around the world, go to KushnerEntertainment.com for more information. And we'll catch you next week on The Wedding Biz. 